This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Right, how's everybody doing tonight? You guys, uh, everybody good? That was pretty cool. Divi, Divi theme. I, I haven't used it a whole lot. I do, um, I do some stuff on the side still, and I, I work with Divi for uh, one of my clients. Um, I got an issue that I think I'm going to go talk to her a little bit. One of the uh, scrolling ones, um, I get an error every time I try to edit it. So I think it's just out of date. But um, any case, uh, my name is Joshua Drew. I'm a technical evangelist for Microsoft. Um, it is my job to preach the good news of Microsoft to developers across the world, um, really in New England. My, my region is New England. Uh, I work with students, startups, and developers, really getting them exposed to Microsoft technologies. And one of the ways we go about doing that is um, this, this type of stuff, you know, these forward-facing events. Sometimes we do hands-on workshops. Uh, obviously, we do a lot of stuff here at Nerd. Uh, so today we're going to talk about um, Microsoft Cloud and how you can use WordPress on it. So I, um, I have a love-hate relationship with WordPress since probably 2008. Um, I've worked prior to Microsoft, I worked at a bunch of different digital agencies and WordPress was kind of the CMS of choice when we were building um, you know, websites and, and, uh, and for our clients, whether it was e-commerce or whether it was just you know, a typical like a, you know, promotional website or, or a, an editorial website. Um, so I have a little bit of love-hate relationship with it. Um, I, I agree with her about the plugins. Plugins are plugins. So what we're going to talk about today is how we can use WordPress out on Azure. So are you all familiar with our cloud? Have you heard about our cloud, Azure? So there's a bunch of different commercials going on. Um, obviously, if you're in here, you probably see um, our, our cloud platform. It's really broken up into three distinct groups is the easiest way to kind of describe it. And this, this holds true for really any cloud platform. So the, the first is kind of platform as a service. So we're going to talk a little bit about, and I got a bunch of demos I'm going to go through, um, WordPress with platform as a service. Um, what you do with that is you just kind of get it up and running, right? So you manage the software. You don't have to manage the hardware, right? You guys don't want to manage the hardware. I don't want to manage hardware. No one wants to do that. So with a platform as a service, it allows you to kind of just worry about your design, worry about your code and not have to worry about the hardware. You do get some cool benefits from um, like scaling and monitoring and, and diagnostics, but from a hardware standpoint, I don't really have to worry about that. I don't have to configure that. It's just a one-click deploy. So if you've used um, you know, GoDaddy for WordPress, um, uh, what's the other big one, HostGator, you know, that type of stuff, you are familiar with you know, the platform as a service. The other big area uh, that you can utilize WordPress is kind of the software as a service. You still got that platform as a service, but now you can utilize some of the software services that Azure has. So when you think about hosting companies, sure, there's you know, the website, but there's beyond that. There's more than that, right? There's databases, there's uh, content delivery networks, there's storage mechanisms, there's push notifications, you know, all of those things that kind of go into a cloud hosting that's what we have as well. And I'll talk a little bit of how we can extend WordPress to utilize some of those features as well. And the last is kind of typical, right? Or maybe I shouldn't say the word typical, but it's, it's kind of the easy way is infrastructure as a service. So that's kind of the virtual machine, the machine. So back in the day, right, when you had to create a website, you had to get a machine, right, a, a developer, a, a development server or a production server, install some type of operating system on that, and then install WordPress or install your, word, uh, your, your website. You don't really have to do that anymore. I don't need a physical machine anymore. I got machines out in the cloud, and I can stand these up pretty, pretty easily. The nice thing about uh, infrastructure as service or a virtual machine is that I can customize it. I can do whatever I want with this machine. Whereas the platform as a service and the software as a service, I'm kind of hindered a little bit that I can't really get into the nitty gritty of the machine or the operating system. Infrastructure as a service gives me that right out of the bat. So if I wanted to install you know, a line of business application or some type of you know, service that's running in the background, I can do that on infrastructure as a service. So we're going to talk about those, those three distinct, and I have a bonus one which actually combines all of them. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. I'll show you a couple of demos. So um, I think I'm just going to jump right into um, each of the demos. So I'm going to probably jump back and forth from the, the presentation. Um, I think that's probably the easiest way. But real quick with uh, platform as a service, we're predominantly talking about WordPress, obviously, because you're the WordPress group. But just uh, on a side note, um, our platform as a service is platform agnostic. So we support Java. We support Node.js. 
We support Python, obviously .NET and ASP and HTML, but we're, we're a platform agnostic uh, service. So uh, when you're thinking about you know, hosting and you're thinking about clients, um, you can always you know, add Azure into that mix. And again, like I mentioned before, you don't have to worry about the hardware when it comes to platform as a service. So I'm going to jump right into the demo. So this is the portal, just like you know any other management um, site, you kind of log in and you kind of get a bunch of stuff that you can do. So I'm going to quickly show you guys how to do um, a, a WordPress website um, using the, the platform as a service um, feature. This is weird because I got this looking here and I'm here, it's kind of freaky. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click new, uh, web mobile, and there's a bunch of pre-configured uh, web apps that I can choose. And these are some of the featured ones. But if I go to see all, I go into the gallery and I get a, a, a ton of stuff. Um, I can get Drupal. Uh, there's a bunch of other uh, CMS uh, that are out there. But there's also uh, WordPress. So I'm going to search for WordPress. And a few things should come back. Um, scalable WordPress, which I'm going to save for uh, a demo in a moment. Um, but this is the standard WordPress that I'm going to choose. It's so a one, one or two click install. It uh, gives me a little bit of uh, meta information about WordPress, but then I can click create. The next step is the real configuration aspect of it. The, the first part is kind of your uh, host name. Um, you can have custom domain names. So if you've got you know, domain.com, that type of thing, you can map that um, over to your WordPress uh, Azure website. But by default, when you're setting it up, it just gives you a generic um, hostname.azurewebsites.net. So in this case, I will just type WordPress Boston, see if that's available. That is available. So once this site is created, uh, we can go to wordpressboston.azurewebsites.net and we'll be able to see that uh, website. Um, some people have multiple subscriptions, so uh, you can choose which subscription you want this website to be associated with. I just currently have one, so it's, it's defaulted here. Um, a resource group is kind of a template, so if I'm creating multiple websites, and this is true for like clients, if I have multiple clients and they all need the exact same uh, type of infrastructure, uh, I could create templates and always pick the exact same template so I can rapidly deploy the same type of site. When I say type of site, I'm talking you know, the, how many CPUs, how much memory, you know, what's the scaling aspect, so it's this pre-configured template so I can get that stuff out rather quickly. So I'm going to choose the um, default web because I have a template already created. Or you could go new and step through the, um, the process. The, uh, the plan um, by default is um, in the east region. Uh, you can choose which region you want your uh, server, so to speak, to live in. We have um, 14 data centers around, so you can just pick one where it's closer to you. That's probably the best recommendation. However, once you start scaling, you can then start using content delivery networks and you can use distributed environments where now I can push my content to other areas across the world. So obviously if all my customers are on the East Coast, I probably want my server or my website on the East Coast to get the fastest response time. However, if the majority of my customers are coming from you know, Eastern Europe, then sure, I'm going to want to uh, put my website out in Eastern Europe. So I'll choose um, here. Now for the database, Right, we all know, you know the, the power of WordPress is really you know, the MySQL database. Um, Azure uh, does not natively support MySQL. It's uh, partnered through a company called ClearDB. They're a very large uh, MySQL database provider. I mean, you go to cleardb.com and you can sign yourself up for you know, managed uh, MySQL uh, service. We partner with them. So anytime you configure a WordPress website, kind of sends that information out to ClearDB and creates a database for you. So by default, I can, uh, I can give it a name. So default MySQL, then most likely that'll be taken. So I'll call it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Um, database type, shared environment. So uh, the cost will be a little bit lower if it's shared, right? Because now I'm sharing a database with maybe you and a couple other people. So the cost will be a little bit lower. If I need a dedicated environment, I can choose that as well. I can also choose locations, right? So 
um, I'll probably end up choosing the east uh, region as well. Now to get into some of the pricing of the clear DB, this is one thing that's a little tricky, is that this is billed uh, separately than your Azure subscription, right? So Azure subscription, you come in, you log in, you sign up, you know, hit your credit card. This is a separate subscription since it's a third party service. However, what's kind of neat is they give you a free tier. The free tier is a 20 meg database. It's not a whole lot, but it kind of gets you going a little bit just if you want to test it out. Um, or you can pick a few other ones. So you see, you know, there's a $10 plan. Um, you know, that's not bad. That gets 15 total connections. And those are simultaneous connections. So 15 people at the exact same time need to issue a call to your database. I mean, that's it's still pretty decent. I mean, it's not, um, you know, great, but it's, it's pretty decent. So I'll choose the... Um, the, yeah, the El Cheapo for, for this uh, demo. And keep hitting OK. And then uh, these are the web app settings. So obviously, if you installed WordPress, maybe you've seen a bunch of different keys. I could go in here and put some salt in there um, to, to make the uh, encryption and the connections out to the database uh, a little more secure. But again, for this demo, I'm going to ignore that. And the last thing I really need to do is just select the uh, legal terms. It's basically saying, hey, you're going to authorize a third party to charge you 10 bucks a month, 8 bucks a month, or whatever your usage is for ClearDB. So I'm going to say yes for that. I hit create, and hopefully in a, a moment or two, um, that will be deployed. So a couple things to note about the, um, the web app is by signing up, you can, you can actually sign up for a free trial. Um, you have to put a credit card in uh, to, just to make sure that you're not a, a robot. You get a free trial. Um, it's a 30-day free trial. You get $150 to, to utilize for the month. However, when the free trial is over, you still can use Azure for 10 websites for free. You can't map a domain name to them, so it can't be, you know, myname.com. However, we can have, um, I forgot what we just called this already, Boston WordPress or WordPress Boston. We can have wordpressboston.azurewebsites.net. We can have 10 of those websites for free. So while that's going, should be a little quicker than that. I'll come back to that in a moment, let that continue on. So that's, that's the platform as a service. Pretty easy, and you know, once you log in, you can get the exact same WordPress that you would get anywhere, obviously minus the plugins, right? So the next big area is um, platform and software, right? So um, that's where we start taking advantage of what Azure has to offer, right? Where we can start taking advantage of you know, storage. So normally, by default, when you install WordPress uh, and you do you know, your file upload, that goes directly to your web server. Now, if you have a lot of images, you know, if you have a portfolio or maybe even some videos on your, on your website, anytime someone hits that, it's actually going to your disk for your website to pull those photos or videos over. Over time, or depending on what your traffic is, that, that's a bottleneck. That's going to slow down your server, depending on what your uh, hosting is, and how they charge for um, uh, cost, that could be a cost as well. Because not only is it bandwidth, but now it's going to be disk usage and CPU time. So in order to uh, eliminate that, um, you want to use a storage account or content delivery network, network. Has anybody used that or heard of CDNs? A couple people? OK, so at least it's, it's in your mind. So basically what a CDN is, it takes uh, the images or media. Uh, it doesn't really have to be media. It could also be JavaScript, but mostly like static or, or image type files. And it puts that into a totally different domain uh, and a different uh, infrastructure so that it serves uh, those images much quicker based on uh, where your client is coming from. So if my server is on the East Coast, right? So we, we chose East Coast. But my client is coming from the West Coast. If I'm on a CDN network, it'll say, OK, where are the images or where's the hosting on the West Coast? Oh, it's in you know, California or Seattle. Great, serve the images from there. However, serve the content you know, coming out of the MySQL database or any you know, content that's on the website, serve that from the East Coast. So the images will load quicker than, than normal. So you won't get that, that lag. So there's an option within Azure. So let's go back into, did you guys, did you guys see the, uh, yes, OK. Uh, let's go back into Azure. Oh, this guy's still going. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Just finished. All right, so I'll, I'll jump back into that one right after I show you this, this one. I'm not going to fully deploy this one um, because I can have a better uh, demo later. Um, so in the web and mobile, same type of thing, see all. Search for WordPress. There's an option called scalable. And what this gives you 
is um, it gives you the same step-by-step -step that we just went through, right? You add a host name, you choose a plan, all that type of stuff, but it gives you an option to create a storage account. And what a storage account is, is just, it's that. It's an it's account that's ready, it's a blob storage that's ready for media, right? So whether it's images, whether it's uh, PDF files, whether it's videos, it's ready to take that information uh, or, or that data and, and put it in the storage account. The other cool thing is this version of WordPress has a plugin that utilizes the storage account. It's called an Azure Storage Plugin. So anytime you upload an image, as long as you say yes, use the default Azure uh, storage account, instead of putting it in, you know, slash upload, slash 2015, slash, you know, whatever the, the date is, instead of putting it there, it'll actually go put it out in the Azure storage account. I can then map a CDN to it, and now my website is a little uh, faster, it's a little more scalable. show you that one part here. If I click create, it looks exactly the same, but down here there's a storage account. So um, by default, it just randomly generates some type of storage account, but I probably want to create something with a good uh, nomenclature so I know what it is. You know, maybe this would be Boston WordPress storage account, and that's where all the, um, the media will go. But we'll, I got another um, little demo where I'll go into a little more detail of that. This one still uses ClearDB, so now you still have, you know, a little bit on Azure, and a little bit out on uh, this third-party ClearDB service. So the third option is the infrastructure as a service. And this is um, it's, it's yet another way to deploy. Um, I don't really think there's one that's better than the other. It's really depending on um, what you guys are used to. Uh, obvi obviously, this way is a little more server admin uh, friendly. So if you're familiar with Linux and you're familiar with installing you know, from command lines and that type of stuff, this would probably be the, the route to go. If you have an existing you know, line of business application that maybe sits you know, in parallel with, uh, with WordPress, then you know, this is probably something that you want to look at. Um, infrastructure as a service, it takes a little bit longer to kind of get up and running um, because you have to do the installation and you actually have to create the virtual machine. And what's cool about infrastructure as a service, there are three different ways that you can deploy Azure through uh, infrastructure as a service as well. So if we go to compute, since this is kind of a, um, that's what they call it in, in Azure, compute time, infrastructure as a service, um, we could search for Linux, right? Because um, we need, well, technically we don't need it, but if, if we're going to run this way, we can run um, a Linux server and then install uh, Apache, right? Install MySQL, install PHP. I got my LAMP stack up and running, and then I can install uh, uh, WordPress on top of that, right? So, but that's going to take some time. If I don't know command lines and I don't know how to do that, that's going to be a little troublesome. So that's one way, right? So I can search for um, a flavor of Linux. Ubuntu is usually uh, a pretty good one. It's pretty popular right now. So we have a few different um, flavors. 15 is kind of the, the latest one that's out there. And again, that's a vanilla uh, server that's being installed. There's nothing on that except for Linux. So you would have to go install everything else. You'd have to install Apache, you have to install MySQL, you have to install PHP. What's cool about this though is that it's, it's totally customizable. You have the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. So that's one way. The other way is through um, what's called uh, our open cloud, or excuse me, our open technologies. And we have community um, companies that contribute virtual machines that are already pre-configured uh, to our cloud platform. So if I search for WordPress, I'll get back um, a few different virtual machines that are already configured with WordPress. So the, the second one um, is by a company called Bitnami. Bitnami is a, a pretty large technology company. They do a lot of software. They do a lot of... Uh, configuration. They actually do hosting as well. So they created a virtual machine with WordPress already installed, uh, running on Linux, which has MySQL, which has PHP, which has Apache. It's already installed. Everything's up and running. They provide you a little uh, readme file so that you figure out, okay, how do I log in? You know, what's the roots password and the admin password, that type of thing. And obviously you can change it. So that's, that's one way to do it. So you don't have to do anything. You just one click deploy. It's gone. A second way, if you guys are familiar with containers, Docker uh, provides a WordPress and a MySQL uh, container, again, which is already pre-configured, already up and running, and you can deploy that pretty easy as well. So that, that's a couple different ways. The way that 
I actually use um, this is I just use Word, or excuse me, I use the virtual machine just as a database server. That's it. The reason is I don't want to use that third party clear DB. I, there's really no reason for me to have my website, which is hosted on Azure, why go across the wire to a third party um, server? Why not stay within the Azure environment? So, what I'll do is I'll create um, a virtual machine just for MySQL. That, that way, I don't have to worry about charging or them charging me you know, for extra money for you know, different connections and whatnot, I can manage it. So what I'll do is I'll search for a LAMP stack, right? So I just need Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. That's it. I don't need WordPress on this thing. I just need a database. So I'll search for um, you know, one of these LAMP stacks, and I'll install that. Now, again, it's by Bitnami, so Bitnami will give me a bunch of uh, information on how to access it, but I'll have a MySQL database out there and I'll configure my WordPress on the front end, right? Platform as a service. I'll configure my, my WordPress to now go talk to my MySQL database. No pun intended by saying my MySQL, but I'll have it talk to my MySQL database. So as the last demo, actually, let's go back to this guy, see if this one's up and running. Okay, this guy's up and running. So before I jump over to that demo, let me, let me show you this guy. So this is WordPress Boston. He's up and running. So if we click on the URL, we should be able to get just the default uh, installation page. Okay, so I'll choose English. Now, if you notice, it didn't ask me for the username and password for the database because that's kind of all pre-configured behind the scenes with, um, with ClearDB. So that's chugging along. So what that's going to do is, is go out to ClearDB, run the, um, the installation script out on the database, um, you know, provide me with a login, and I can uh, now log in and configure that um, as I see fit. The, the way I like um, running WordPress, and I actually have um, I support a couple friends slash clients uh, websites with WordPress. I use platform as a service, so I use the WordPress platform but I use a virtual machine just running MySQL, and I'll configure um, WordPress to talk to my MySQL as opposed to going directly out to um, Bitnami, or excuse me, um, ClearDB. So what I'll show you how to do that is I'll do web and mobile, see all, and I'm gonna choose PHP. Because what I want to do is I don't want to um, I don't want to use a pre-configured uh, WordPress installation that's out on Azure. I want to I want to control the, the configuration, right? Because remember what I said: these pre-configured um, configurations they're go looking out to ClearDB. I need to to look to my my database, my my MySQL database. So I'm just going to stand up an empty web app which is running PHP. So this should, let me just custom WP install. That looks fine. So I'll get that up and running. In the meantime, let's say we did go through the steps of uh, creating uh, that LAMP stack. Right? Remember I showed you I searched for LAMP and I found uh, a Bitnami package which will have you know, MySQL on it. So this is my, uh, my virtual machine uh, settings. So here's my DNS name or my host name. So that would be the host name that I use to enter into the WordPress installation. Obviously, I need to know what the username and password is for the, um, the MySQL database, right? Whether it's root or whether it's a, a specific uh, username and password for the, uh, for the database. I need to know that as well. Um, but as once I have a virtual machine up and running from a backend standpoint, I can look at scaling, I can look at redundancy, I can look at um, you know, replication. So I know there's, what, what's the, the, the biggest problem when it comes to WordPress, right? Deploying, right? When you're doing something on staging or a test and then you wanna go deploy, 
well, you got to make sure that the databases are in sync. It's one thing to push the code. It's another thing to make sure that the database is in sync. Well, if I have two virtual machines that are identical, I could just keep those things replicated over and over again, right? Called DB1, DB2, and DB1 would be production, DB2 can be staging or QA. They're constantly in sync. So when I'm looking at it from a client standpoint, right, staging.myclient.com versus, you know, www.myclient.com, they can be pointing to different databases, right? And then I can move the code over um, back and forth. It, it, it all depends on how, how you want to work. So this is um, my DNS name. All right, so my cloud app.net. So let me uh, actually, I'm not going to copy that yet because I need to finish the other thing. All right, so he is installed. So here's the web app. So if I go here, there should be nothing. It should be blank. Great. There's, there's nothing there. So now we need to get WordPress on here. So how do you guys typically install WordPress? Do you guys just go to straight to a hosting company and click a couple of buttons and WordPress is installed? Okay. All right. Um, has anybody ever. Um, installed WordPress through like Git or download the zip and FTP, that type of thing? Okay. So um, that's kind of what I'll do here. So this is an empty PHP site. So like I said, when I uh, use the default um, uh, WordPress web apps, it has the connection information out to the hosting company called ClearDB. I don't want that. So there's two ways I could go about doing it. One is I can um, deploy it that way, go into the WP config. Who knows about the WP config? So a couple people, okay. So I could go into WP config, change the database connection, that type of thing, fine. But now I still have to run the database scripts out on my new database, right? So that's still a problem. Um, the other way to do it is create a, a blank app and download um, directly from the Git repository out to my blank web app, and that's what I'll do. So I will go to um, GitHub WordPress. And I'll have a Git URL. Has anybody used Git? A couple people? Okay. So um, the easiest way to describe Git is um, it's a version source control tracking merge conflict smorgasbord. Um, there's a lot of um, new tools out there that uh, um, pull stuff down from GitHub, from package managers. Um, has anybody used Composer with PHP? Composer is a PHP um, package library or package manager. So if I need to download particular packages for PHP, um, I could use that for, for Composer, uh, through Composer. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll just grab the Git URL and I'll go back into my, um, my settings. So this is my custom WP install settings. And we have this thing called continuous deployment. And there's a couple cool features about the continuous deployment. Uh, the first is um, where or how I can deploy out to this website. So I can get, uh, if I go to deployment credentials, I can type in a username and password, and that'll automatically enable me to FTP, right? So most people know how to do FTP, so I can FTP out if I want to. Um, or I can deploy through a bunch of different areas. So um, if I have OneDrive or Dropbox, right? Everybody most likely has Dropbox, right? So if I have files out there, I can deploy directly out to um, uh, my website. Don't really think that's practical for WordPress. Um, it would take a little more configuration if you just wanted to you know, customize a theme and just have your theme, your WP themes copied over. Um, so I wouldn't recommend that. However, for this particular example, I'm going to deploy through an external rep repository, right? So there's that GitHub, GitHub slash WordPress. I need that code out on this website. So I'll click on external repository and put in the uh, git URL and I'll just say okay. So this will take a moment or so too. So what this is going to do is uh, go out to uh, github.com, uh, make sure that it's a valid URL and start pulling down all those files. So I don't know how big WordPress is, I don't know if it's you know, probably 10, 20 megs, something like that, I don't think it's that big. Um, so it should take just a couple minutes or so. Yeah, there we go. So we're, we're bringing it down. So it's bringing it down and it'll tell me when it's finished. Um, once it's finished, I can then go back to this site and I'll start the WordPress installation process. So while that's going, let me talk a little bit about a couple cool features um, when it comes to these web apps. 
So I was mentioning the, before about these uh, deployment slots or you know, when you need to deploy um, your code. So this is really um, crucial if, you're, you know, if you have a client and they want to kind of see the stuff in beta or pre-production. Um, we used to do you know, this all the time. We'd always set up a client environment and then set up a, a production environment. What a deployment slot does is takes that exact same environment that you have production and kind of mirrors it over to staging or QA. And what you then get is you get environmental variables. So obviously my production database is probably going to be different than my staging database. However, WordPress is looking for you know, DB underscore name and DB underscore password. So now I have to make sure that hey, I get, when I copy this stuff over to production, I got different usernames and passwords. You don't really have to do that when it comes to deployment slots because there's these co things called environmental variables. So if I set a variable for staging for you know password one two three four five for staging, but production is six seven eight nine zero, you know the variable will will, will override. Um, so that's what's kind of cool about deployment slots. The other neat thing about deployment slots, and I know we always had this issue, was that it always works in staging, it doesn't work in production, right? You're testing, it always works on dev, it doesn't work in production. Well, why is that? Because usually the environments don't mirror each other. You know, something's a little different, patching, you know, versions, that type of thing. Deployment slots take care of that. So it's the exact same environment in, in both places. So let's go back to our deployment, see if that finished. Building. So a couple other things in here. Um, you, can, um, you can check traffic. You can monitor endpoints. So if, you're, if your site is slow, you can really see where the traffic is coming from. Uh, so maybe you know, your traffic is coming from the West Coast, right? We set up the, the server on the East Coast, but now I'm getting all the traffic from the West Coast. Well, you know what? Maybe I need to replicate my server out to the West Coast so that the, the traffic, I, I, I help out that traffic over there. So there's a lot of different um, customizations uh, that you can do. Uh, in monitoring. And that's still going. So while that's still going, let's talk about uh, the storage account. Right? So we, we talked a little bit before about you know, content delivery and how we want to remove uh, our media from the web server, get that off the web server. So what we want to do is create a storage account. So I have one already created, but if you click on new, and it's called storage, data storage, We choose store, storage account. I have one already created. Let me find it. There we go. Custom media. And what's neat about a storage account beyond just WordPress is I can provide different keys and different level of access to um, different types of media and different uh, containers. So let's say I have videos. <clears throat> I create a, a container called videos and maybe I'll have a special key that's only read-only, right? Um, maybe I create a container called, um, you know, documents, something like that. Maybe that's a read-only key. So whoever I give that key to, whether it's a web app or whether it's a mobile app or, or you know, some other access into it, it'll only allow that user to read-only, right? But if it's a document, maybe I want to do edit, right? So full control so I can change the keys. The keys are needed when we do uh, the CDN because um, the content delivery is actually going to go into your container, grab those images, and replicate those around the world. So this is my, um, my media container. And if we go into blobs, I should have some stuff in here that I uploaded. There we go. So I have a media folder. In a media folder, you see this is the structure, right? 2015, 12, etc. So WordPress uploaded, and this was a test I was doing. WordPress uploaded uh, these images into my storage container. So more on that in a moment. Let me go back to our.
Okay, so it did finish it. Okay, cool. So here's our, our default installation. So uh, let's, let's recap a little bit. So um, I created a virtual machine that's just going to host a database, right? Just a MySQL database. Um, I then created an empty website where I pulled down WordPress to run the installation. So I'll hit continue English. Now it's going to ask me for my um, DB information, right? So I need to go find my database information. But didn't copy it, so here it is, my SQL DB. host and I already created a database out there and I don't remember the name of it. I think it's custom WP. Custom WP. I think the password's password. Let's see if that works. Yep. So that'll run the uh, Oh, I guess I never deleted the tables. Live demos. Oh, man. Um, please hold. Because I really want to show you the, um, the storage account. I just got to delete that um, config file. Let me ask a, a question as I'm doing this. Is this, um, would anybody do this? <laughs> Help people? Well, what about the web app install? Web app install is pretty easy, right? You just kind of click through that and you get it installed up and running. Uh, th this, I mean, some of this stuff is, is probably um, beyond uh, your typical um, GoDaddy and, and stuff like that. Uh, however, if you do get a client that's looking for, you know, well, not so much Azure, but, you know, enterprise grade where, you know, it's, it's, it's solid. Um, you know, this is something that you want to look at. You know, whether it's us or whether it's another company, I mean, these are some of the things that you want to look at. The scaling, the CDN, you know, uh, separate database, replication, that type of thing. Um, so I'm just trying to find Visual Studio Online. So this part you shouldn't have to do. This is because I didn't drop the tables or change the prefix of the uh, installation cre uh, script. I have, it's a different URL. This is the old website, right? So it went to the database and yeah, but it was using the. Um, if you noticed the uh, host name, it already pulled it out of the database and and uh, WordPress Boston. There we go. Okay. Continue. Let's go.
So as this is installing, so um, there's a plugin. Um, it's called uh, Azure Storage. You install that plugin, and it'll map your WordPress um, installation and override the uh, media upload. So instead of uploading directly to your uh, uploads folder, it'll go out to your uh, storage account. Um, Uh, not on this one. If I did the scalable WordPress, yes, it would get installed automatically. But on this one, um, I have to search for it. Azure Storage. There we go. It connects me, it connects it back to not the virtual machine, but my storage account on Azure. So the database is on the virtual machine. The storage account is part of the Azure infrastructure. And my WordPress site, right, so I have, I got three, three areas. And my WordPress site is on a, a scalable um, web instance. So let me activate the plugin, get this guy going here. Terrific. Settings, Windows Azure. So it's going to ask a couple things. The storage account name. Um, let me go back. I think it was called Custom WP Media. Yep, Custom. Too many windows. Custom WP Media, and then I need a key. Uh, come in here, keys. So remember what I mentioned before in terms of uh, different types of keys and different types of access. This is a primary key, so it's going to get full access. Now if I save this guy, this little drop-down menu will populate with the different containers that I've already created. Um, so I can create a new container. So uh, I created a media container, so that's going to upload all my, my media files, all my images, whatever I upload through um, the admin tool. Um, but if I wanted to create files, right, let's say if I had a, a, a way to upload PDFs or something like that, I can create um, different containers for different files, but it's, it's fine to keep everything the same. Um, your C name, this would map back to your content delivery network. So um, your CDN has a different name than www.mydomain.com. It's usually something, right? Like um, what's, um, I forget what Amazon's is. Um, what is Amazon's called? Cloud, cloud something? I forget what it's called. Any case, um, so you would add that here. So if I go into a post, and let me just create a new one. So test images. So it's pulling in the images that I had. Remember I showed you before I had a bunch of different images. So this is pulling in the different images that I already uploaded to the container. If I um, don't have one, I can upload a file to the container. But I do have one, so I'll just pick one of these. This is my daughter playing soccer. Publish that guy out. Let me view the post. So um, typically, if we looked at that file, it would be wordpressboston.azurewebsites.net slash wp upload slash 2015 slash 12 slash whatever the thing is. So if I inspect the element, um, I'm going to get my uh, blob name, right? So if you see, I'm on custommedia.blob.core.media.net. So all the images are being served not, uh, not from my web server, they're being served from um, a blob storage. Now, I need to then go ahead and map a CDN so that those images are transferred around the world, but that's a, that's a second step, that's another step. Security line there. What do you mean? Take that file, is there any security or no? 
Um, since I gave WordPress the primary key, um, it's able to access that. If I wanted to um, change it to a private container so that it doesn't get picked up through, let's say, Google, I could do that within the storage account. So if I go back into the storage account, I forget exactly where it is. You can choose public pr or private, and there's a third. Um, I might have to get back to you on that exactly where that is. I thought it was under under here. But if it's a private account, the only way you can access it is through a key. Um, I think that's it. The only other thing I wanted to share is just a few different links. Uh, we'll talk about that. So I just want to share a couple links. So um, my website, Drew5.net, I got a ton of different content out there, um, mostly PHP, um, .NET, a little, little bit of everything. Um, I do have a blog series. Um, I created a little bit.ly URL, uh, Linux powered by Azure. It's a little blog series on how to stand up a Linux VM, how to install LAMP stack, how to install WordPress, that type of thing. Um, Syntax4.net, uh, blog.syntax4.net is a, a fellow colleague of mine, Corey Fowler. I don't know if you guys know or have heard of him. He's a big PHP guy. He does all the PHP stuff for Microsoft. Um, he's really big into uh, WordPress. Myself and him were down at PHP World Conference uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, so that was a lot of fun. And then azure.microsoft.com slash en slash develop slash PHP. It's a whole PHP portal. Um, you guys might say, oh, PHP, this is WordPress. Well, it's, it's all lives in the same, uh, the same world uh, out there. And for you guys sticking around and uh, coming to the event, if you go to that website, the last website, aka.ms slash Boston WordPress Azure, you will be automatically enrolled into BizSpark, which is, which is a program that gives you free Azure for three years. So all that good stuff that we just talked about, you get that free for three years. You get $150 a month to spend out on Azure. So um, what that means is you know, compute time, so if the machine is running, storage, right, so all those images that we talked about, and um, bandwidth, pulling those images out, pulling the, um, you know, users coming in and out, those three things combined create um, a dollar amount, and you have 150 of those dollars to spend out on Azure. Um, so, yeah, so that, that'd be pretty cool. So you can stand up a virtual machine, you can run this particular environment. This environment that I have set up, I have for two clients, and it's about 65 bucks a month. Um, so, you know, you can put a few more, um, you know, instances on there and it, and it should be fine. So, yeah, so sign up. Uh, you get the free account and you're good to go for three years. You also get a ton of Microsoft software. Uh, you get what's called an MSDN subscription where you can download Visual Studio. You can download SQL Server, all that other jazz. Um, but the big thing really is, is Azure. You get that for three years. Cool. Great, thanks. Yes. And what about when? Um, if you're, so there's, so I mentioned the free account, right? So there's a free website that does not allow you to map a domain. Uh, the next step up is uh, shared. You can map a domain to shared websites and then there's basic, there's standard and there's premium. You can map domains to that. The only thing that you would need to do is be able to access like a CNAME record from your registrar. You need to put in a little code and then tell Azure, okay, this is what the code is that's out there and it marries the two together. So, yeah, good question. So, remember we talked about platform as a service, software as a service, and infrastructure as a service. So, infrastructure as a service, that's all you. As soon as you stand up that virtual machine, we're hands off. We'll make sure that basically you got internet and you have power, but everything else is up to you. The other two, the platform and the software, we're constantly updating that stuff. Um, we won't touch your code, right? So, if WordPress is on version 4.4 and it comes out to 5 at some point, we're not going to update that. However, the web server that's running, we're constantly patching and updating that. And how about backup and recovery? That is, that's something that you'd have to do as well. There's a, a default backup, which I think is small. It's only like five megs or something like that. But you can then back that up to your storage account. So you can have a job that runs.
to say, hey, take my existing website, put it to my storage account. So hence how I made those different containers. You can have a media container for your images, and then you can have a backup container for your, your backup. The other thing you could do is um, if you get to, I forget exactly which plan, I don't know if it's a premium or the basic plan, but those have um, geo-redundancy backup. So if your server fails in the U.S., it'll pop up in you know, Europe or you know, Asia or something like that. Yes? Yep, you could do that. And for different WordPress installs, can I use that same storage? Yep, you could. You could, you could create separate storage. It, it really depends on how your brain works. If you want to create one account f with multiple clients or multiple client accounts or multiple site accounts. Well, but I, have, I have two clients that have lots and lots of images. I'm thinking that would be great. Yep, I probably, I probably would do you know, client A and this is all their stuff, client B, this is all their stuff, as opposed to putting them all together, but six to one half dozen the other, it's really how, how you organize things. But yes, you don't necessarily have to move your WordPress over to Azure, you can utilize Azure for storage. Yes, you can definitely do that. Anything else? No? Oh, so there was a point at which you had to enter in the subscription. Correct. So if you if you sign up for this account, you will get a subscription. It'll show up there. Yes. Cool. 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 All right. Excellent. Thank you.